Hello, my name is Alan Lilly, and welcome to my latest project. I've got a Sherline mill here I've had for a number of years. Uh, I've only done a few projects on it. I'm kind of an amateur, but uh, to increase my uh, use of this mill, I've decided I'm going to turn it into a CNC mill and hook it up to a computer. I bought a bunch of uh, different parts here. I've got them all ready to go, and I'm going to try to document the uh, process of converting it and hooking it all up. Uh, I've got a lot to learn, and I thought I'd share. Here's a little better look of my uh, dusty Sherlock mill and the old uh, rotary table, which I'm going to sell on eBay. It's got the uh, new CNC version. I'm going to do a four axis mill. This is the uh, control box that'll connect to the computer and it's sort of the inter between, in intermediate between the uh, motors and the computer. This is by Xylotex on the web. Seem to be the one of the most cost-effective solutions out there. Here are the uh, four motors that get, uh, sent me. I think uh, 260 ounce inch, which is pretty pretty big, uh, pretty large motors. Should have plenty of torque to uh, turn this little mill. A bunch of other miscellaneous parts. I had to get a uh, uh, parallel port adapter for my uh, laptop because it doesn't have a par parallel port. It's my understanding this uh, should work with the different uh, mill software we're going to run. Some uh, other parts here because I got a mine's a slightly older model, but like pre 2001. Uh, I'm going to have to uh, tap, uh, drill and tap holes on both tables and the and the Z axis. Uh, so I got some really good quality uh, greenfield uh, taps and. Uh, drill bits. So I've got my little cutting fluid for the tapping. Here's my uh, laptop. And here is the uh, conversion kit from Sherline. Convert, you know, it's got all the other components I'll need to convert it. A lot of uh, new uh, screws for the tables. Um, what else we got here? Oh, I even got the uh, Sherline uh, Backlash Upgrade, Z-Axis Upgrade. I'm told that it's kind of a, uh, one of the, I mean, you're going to have Backlash on, on any of the axes uh, with, you know, the, the wheels here, but apparently the Z-Axis is supposed to be kind of important for CNC, so it was fairly cheap. So let's get started. This is the instruction sheet for the, installing the CNC stepper motor mounts. And step one says, using the hand wheels, move the table and saddle so that they are as close to the hand wheel as possible. Well, my interpretation of that looks something like this. Look at the hand wheels that are closer. And the saddle, as I understand it, is this little part here, that's where the thread is uh, riding on to push the axis in its direction. So that's got the saddle close to the handwheel. The next step is to remove the handwheels. It's right here. I have zero adjusting handwheels. There's a little Allen screw in here. And we need to just rotate my zero adjusting handwheels until you see a little hole. And that's where the Allen screw is. This is a 3 seconds inch. Allen wrench, and we loosen it. It won't come out, you just need to loosen it. And then you can slide it off the uh, little uh, axle there. Interesting. Hmm. Okay, and step number four it says remove the lead screw thrust from the appropriate base table or column. And do some quick research on the web, and I believe that's what this little thing is. Seems the logical next step. This little looks like a big, big fat washer. It's a little uh, same size, three thirty seconds Allen screw holding it in. And these little puppies are kind of tight on all the hand wheels in this one, so you really have to have a good uh, wrench, kind of like this one, that can really take the torquing because they really pop when they set loose, like that. I feel like they put. You can really feel this uh, 
this wrench twisting it's putting so much pressure on it but apparently that's how much you got to do you take that out at least on an old one anyway mine's pretty old see how this comes off just slide straight off cool okay so now all I've got to do is repeat this for all of the lead screw thrusts this table ah. And the Z axis thrust right here is held in differently instead of having a little screw that's like on this side like the other two uh, the table has a little Allen head right here because as you'll see around here it's a it's got a longer a little bit of a collar to it so it's held in from the back side right there so I gotta take that out but by the angle either I'm gonna get a, a ball head Allen wrench or I'm gonna have to take you know this part off which is gonna come off anyway so okay now we're gonna remove the uh, headstock so we can gain access to this uh, Allen screw here uh, and then we take off this thrust bearing or washer and uh, this is a 5 30 seconds Allen wrench a little screw right here and take this off you gotta take, have a good grip on your headstock because it's kind of heavy it's gonna come off. I just have to loosen it enough to get right about there. And slide it off. So maybe I gotta take this screw all the way out. Let's see here. Take it all the way out. Okay. And it comes. Oh, there we go. She's out. Here's a good habit I have. I recommend most of most people try this. Is I try to avoid having a lot of loose screws. Uh, even when I take something apart, I usually put the screw back into the hole, even if it's not holding anything that that it was originally in. That way, I'll have no problem figuring out what screw, screw goes where, and they won't get lost. So I'll just stick it into this guy here, and now it won't get lost. Okay, the uh, next step is to remove the screws here at the end of each of these lead screws. There's a little Allen head screw here. There's one on inside. There isn't one on the Z-axis. But since I don't have the standard hand wheels, the z zero adjust hand wheels don't have a hole through here. So I can't clamp the hand wheel back on and use this as a way to grip the lead screw from rotating while I rotate the Allen screw off. So I have to come up with a different solution. Okay, got the hand wheel off the zip rotary table. I'm gonna put it onto this lead screw. Uh, can make note there, you know, I don't want to lose this. There's this little tiny loose washer here that was being held on by the the oil. I want to make sure you don't lose that. Pretty darn hard. Popped. I see. So that's what's holding that on. Okay, I'll show you that in a second here. Take that off. You can see. Now I'm just going to repeat the process for over here. Step 4B uh, for the Z-axis only, remove the screw that holds the saddle nut to the saddle. 
Okay. Maybe that's this one. It says keep hold of the saddle so it doesn't drop. Okay. Not sure which part it means, but I'll hold everything. ourselves a screw. Put that back in place so we don't lose it. Our screw. Okay, also in that step it says that the uh, re remove the lead screw and the saddle nut and a new lead screw is provided in the kit. Um, and it's already it's already attached to the stepper motor mount. Uh, and I should reinstall the old saddle nut to the new lead screw. I have a feeling in the upgrade kit we got here that we're going to have a new saddle nut. Let's sort of check. And we do. We do have a new saddle nut, so I'm going to use this one with the new kit. Probably the same. I don't know if it's different threads or whatever, but we'll use this because this is our Z axis backlash. Okay, we'll install this on the new lead screw for the Z-axis. The next step says bolt the template parallel to the table where the base to be drilled. Now we're getting to the point where we're going to you know, drill and tap here, here, and here. And it talks about using the provided SHCS. Well, all that is is one of these little screws standard screws that comes with the kit. So I'm going to, uh, I, I think the instructions are assuming that you're going to leave these components bolted together and tap in place. Here, 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 here. Um, but I want to make sure I get a nice, you know, consistent straight drill because I can't do it by hand very well, I'm sure. So I'm going to take these pieces off now and take them over to either the shop, the larger mill I have over there or the woodworking drill press I have and and do the drilling and tapping with those.